going. Yes, and uh, and yeah, in Sanganites we have themes, so we run themes, and the current theme we're running is, uh, well, in, in a way, I can, uh, this is Vidanya's genius in a way, but he's brought two traditional lists, the five Buddha mandala and the, and the paramitas, the six paramitas, uh, the practices of, uh, of, of, of what I want, uh, of Bodhisattva. And he's, he's bring, brought these together because they really match each other really well. The Buddha, the five Buddha mandala, and it's all different aspects of enlightenment in a way. And uh, the, the six paramitas really work together. So we've been looking at them from one week to another. So we've looked at the, we've looked at Akshobhya, who's, uh, who's associated time of day. The Buddha Akshobhya is, is the morning time, the dawn time. And uh, yeah, his elephant uh, animal being the elephant. And also this, uh, the earth touching mudra, the, the an, an, an earth touching mudra. And also the, the paramita of Kashanti of, of, of patience, forbearance, and how that goes with that immovability. And uh, we've also had a look at Ratna Sambhava after that. We went around the mandala, came to midday, and we looked at Ratna Sambhava, who's got the horse as the animal, this, this powerful, beautiful horse, and, uh, and the mudra of supreme generosity, so supreme giving. And uh, the paramita went with that is dana, obviously, generosity, the perfection of generosity. I really matched uh, that Ratna Sambhava. And then the uh, last few weeks, we've been looking at Amitabha, the Red Buddha, who is uh, the sunset, so the time of day is sunset, and the animal being peacock turning basically mythically, or, or probably actually in real life, like eating the snake, eating poisons, and turning them into beauty. And uh, the Dhyana Paramita, so like the perfection of meditation, meditative absorption, is, is, is the paramita that went with that. So uh, we came to last week when we heard from three Sangha members about their practice of generosity, uh, of meditation, sorry. Yeah, I looked at Amogu Amsa, so I thought generosity first thing. <laughs> yeah, uh, so he was giving one of the talks and, and talking about their, yeah, their practice of meditation and, 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 and the meditation mudra that uh, Amitabha has. And this week we're going to we're going to look at Amoga City. So we're going to an introduction to Amoga City. Obviously, there's so much to say about these figures and what they represent and what's what yeah, what what how one can experience them, but just, just a small introduction in that way. And we'll look at yeah, just a bit about his name, what it means, the animal associated with Am Amoga City, the color, uh, the, the particular poison and what, what wisdom is transformed into. The time of day and then and the mudra as well the mudra the hand gesture is associated with amoga city first maybe i'll read a little bit oh, some abstracts from uh, the santra's got a beautiful book on introducing introduction to the buddhas and i think it does a really yeah it does love the beginning so i'll read a bit from there it's i've taken just as an introduction to amoga city you know and it says the last rays of the sun fade away and night falls and we're making our final journey around the mandala to the north, a country of green pine forests. It's dark as we walk between the huge trees, there's rustling and cries. So it would be easy to be afraid and turn back at this point, but then we'd never meet Amoga City, the Buddha of Northern Realm. So I thought there's a beautiful little story and, and setting, uh, scene setting really, just, just to, get a, start to get a sense of Amoga City. And uh, Edward um, is going to show us some images actually of Amoga City now found. So here's, here's one. Just, just take it in, just take it in. Can I have a look at the next one? Yeah, and I think this beautifully sets that scene of northern pine forest and a, and a green Buddha. And we can look at the final picture. And I'll say a bit more about this one. This is, this is the particular animal uh, associated with uh, Amoga City, but you can tell that it's not particularly something you'll find on a Nat Geo or any of, the, <laughs> any of the natural documentaries, which is quite a mythic animal. And it's actually a, a close-up of, uh, of, of this painting at the bottom. You can, you can always come and have a look later as well, if you'd like to see it. And it's, uh, it's called Shang Shang Bird, but I'll say a bit more, uh, I could say a bit more about them, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Amoga City, the name, the name means unstoppable success. 
Amoga City means unstoppable success. And uh, in a way, I think it goes really well with Amitabha in the sense that I mean, like uh, with Akshobhya, so in, in terms of the immovability of Akshobhya, and then you've got the unstoppability of uh, Amoga City. And they make yeah, they're, they're both different aspects of the same enlightenment experience. And when I, when, I, when I think of, well, when I hear Amoga, one of the first things that comes to my, to my mind is my good friend Amoga Vamsa. And, uh, and I think he's, he's really good at uh, like, uh, exemplifying that, that uh, determination and that kind of unstoppability. And stoppability. And last week we told us that he he he'd scared somebody when he was when he was younger before he started practicing, and that got him to practice to become the person he is today. And I see him as a really unstoppable person in terms of serving and building sangha, building community, and helping helping people. So this really embodies that amoga aspect, which is part of his name as well, that unstoppable, unstoppable aspect. Uh, and I did think in my in my playful mind, kind of, I could just I could just paint him green and sit him here for half an hour. <laughs> he, I think we could do that sometime. And, and uh, there is yeah, the part of me thought so actually that might convey more about Amoga City than I could do with words and concepts in half an hour. I think if we just painted him green, put him here, and looked at him for half an hour, I think I think that might give us more of a sense of Amoga City than yeah, words and concepts will be able to. But yeah, I've chosen to go for a more conventional method and not talk. And, but maybe some other day we could do a, a series on uh, on yeah, painting people and putting them up here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's another idea for another day. So that's that's Amoga City. That's his name, the unstoppable success. That's what it that's what it means. And the animal associated. So like uh, Amoga City, out of all the Buddhas and the Mandala, it's, it's said the traditional that it's the most mysterious, mysterious one. I mean, the Buddhas themselves, the whole symbolism is quite, it's quite mysterious in a way. But Amoga City is the most mysterious of them, and the animal associated with him is a uh, yeah, like it hints at that. It's, it's, it's in India, it started as the Garuda bird, so this really mythical, mythical creature. But in in Tibet, uh, it's evolved into the uh, Shangshang bird, so which is half human. And half something like an eagle, and it gives an idea of uh, yeah what Amoga City is kind of hinting at. It's like this union of opposites, union and harm, harm sort of harmonious union of uh, of different and opposites kind of coming together. And the Shangshang birds in 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 the story of Amoga City kind of fly around, whiz around the sky, and they're towing Amoga City in like a chariot behind them and just whizzing all over the place. And they've got these big, big symbols that they're just really clashing together. And this whole symbolism is, is quite, well, it quite evokes a lot of energy, a lot of activity and a lot of energy, which is quite a contrast to, to Amitabha's calm and peaceful sort of, uh, yeah, uh, sort of presence. So it certainly brings that aspect of, of action and energy. So the enlightened mind has that as well. It's got this, it's got a lot of energy, it's got a lot of action. And uh, Amoga City is like the Buddha of the action, the karma family. And in that sense, it really connects to the paramita we're going to talk about next week, which is which is about energy, which is virya, virya paramita, which is about energy in pursuit of, of what's good, what's skillful. So in that way, uh, Amoga City really goes together with the uh, virya paramita. And the color, so the color, as you can tell, is, is dark green. So Amoga City's color is dark green. And uh, in Buddhism, green is the color of action. And also we can see in the natural world, like green is, is growth and progress. So there's, there's, there's also action involved and nature is green. And, uh, and there's something, yeah, there's something beautiful about it. And for me, the, my journey really is, is is, is was different with green. I had connotations from my childhood. I didn't particularly like green. I had I had a, a sort of version to it. But as I've as I've uh, as I've grown and practiced, I've actually recently really got to appreciate the beauty and uh, what what the color green communicates. And if people see me on Zoom, they'll know the wall behind me is like quite a strong green now. So I've just been moved and changed my sort of response to this color in a way that. Is more natural. It's not just conditioned by my my, my conditioning, and it, it's worth spending time with strong colors. I think it's really just looking at them, not trying to understand much, but just 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 looking at the colors. So uh, come to we come to the poison and wisdom of Amoga City, and the poison is is said to transform into envy. So so Amoga City transforms the poison of envy 
to the all-accomplishing wisdom. That's what his wisdom is called, all-accomplishing. And if we look at, well, if we look at envy, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's mixing kind of two unhelpful, very unhelpful and skillful attitudes in a way of ill will and greed. So it's kind of wanting what other people have, but also not wanting them to have it. So it involves, it involves ill will and greed at the same time. And, uh, and if we look at, in terms of like the, the literal translations of Amoga, like uh, the Moga is, 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 is kind of comes from ignorance and deluded and foolish. And in a way, if when well, those familiar with the wheel of life, and uh, if you, you can, all, yeah, you'll come across it more and more. At the center of it, we've had that we had the, the pig, the cock, and the snake. So making go, the, the whole wheel of life go around, the driving in uh, the forces, negative forces. So amoga is the absence of this uh, this ignorance, absence of deludedness, absence of uh, of foolishness in a way, which uh, which is that which is represented by the pig in the middle of the wheel of life. And the snake and the clock being hatred and greed. So Amoga City is saying no, no deludedness, no ignorance. And that leads to an absence of hatred and also greed and craving. So it's, uh, it's transforming basically because this, this attitude of, of not being foolish, not being ignorant about the nature of reality of, of how things are, uh, it leads to an absence of, of hatred and greed. So all the energies that usually go into such things is actually combined. So it's actually combined together and one can put that in, in a skillful direction. So that's what Amoga City does. And that's how it transforms envy into uh, the all accomplishing wisdom. And because so much of it, like, well, the whole psychic sort of integration brings all these energies, maximum energies to achieving that one goal. And, uh, and so it's called the all sort of, uh, yeah, all accomplishing wisdom because it brings, brings all energies together. So a whole being, whole being comes to achieve uh, something. Yeah. So we can move on to, to the time of day of Amaga City. And this is midnight. So midnight and, uh, and darkness. And in that we can really get, a, and in the story as well, like imagine just walking through darkness in a forest. And the, in the rustlings here and the cries, it's got a flavor of fear. So fear arises or fear is around. It's being scared and fear. And uh, I, I recall just, I grew up in a place where there were forests and stuff. And there, were, I, there wasn't pretty much anywhere I wouldn't go in the daytime. There were a lot of places I wouldn't go at night. And I can really relate to, to sort of this invocation that the time of day associated with Amogos City has. It just, it just really brings, brings fear. But it isn't just... Uh, it isn't just like fear of darkness out there. So definitely there's an element of, uh, well, we can quite often fear the darkness in ourselves. So we can fear the dark parts and the, and the shadows of ourselves and the parts of ourselves we don't wish to acknowledge, we don't want to go towards. So uh, Amoga City is sort of, yeah, that, yeah it's, 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 it's action is, is, is a... His invocation, in a way, is also a kind of calling for courage, in a way, to, to, to be open and, and go to those places, to explore the darkness and bring light to the darkness, bring to, to the conscious part of some of our subconscious uh, mind. And also, yeah, integrate and purify those energies that are there, because, yeah, there can be so much energy and anger and ill will and things, and things like that, or greed and craving. And uh, yeah, in a way that leads us on to his mudra, so we call the mudra, his hand gesture. And uh, in his right hand, so we can see on the Buddhas here as well, which has got a uh, Amoga Siddha there, he's got a double Vajra. So we've heard about the Vajra in the Akshobhya talk, it's just, just the power of the Vajra, Vajra. But the double Vajra is even more in a way, and it's also like a really strong symbol of uh, opposites uniting and coming together in harmony and energy coming out of that. And uh, yeah, in a way, I think we'll probably say more about that next week in terms of area and stuff. So, so yeah, that's general uh, yeah, symbolism of the double Vajra, of, of union of opposites. And yeah, his, his, so we got, so we got his, uh, his, his, his left hand holding the double Vajra and we got his right hand. <clears throat> and the right hand is, is, is put out about chest high palm facing, facing front, and going different to, to Ratna Sambhava's supreme generosity with the fingers facing upwards. And this is called Abhaya Mudra, the Abhaya Mudra. 
And it's uh, basically saying fear not. So fear not or fearlessness. It's the mudra of fearlessness, the hand gesture of fearlessness. And uh, yeah, I sort of have vague memories of, of being a child and seeing, seeing, I think it was Native Americans or something like in, in the films and they'd, they'd have that hand up in a way. And, and it, to me, it does, it does sort of symbolize something like I, you'd have nothing to fear from me. A kind of an open hand facing facing her. And I think they'd do that in, 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 in their greeting with people. And there is something beautiful about that. Just there's nothing to fear from me. But also, yeah, it's also internal as well. So it's not just an external thing. And uh, when we say fearlessness, I suppose I could say more of that because it's not a... So Amogu City's <clears throat> fearlessness is not like a, a kind of bravado. So it's not like saying... Nothing scares me. Nothing can hurt me. I'm, 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 I'm immune to all fears. It's not like a bravado sort of thing. <clears throat> it's not kind of the, yeah, it's not kind of this, this uh, I suppose, very stubborn or maybe some kind of warrior attitude that I, I, I don't care, I'm not frightened. And in that sense, I think uh, the family of Amoga City also kind of, yeah, brings a clue to that because we've got, we've got Green Tara on the, on the shrine as well here. And Green Tara is, is in Amoga City's family, which is which people who, who've come across Green Tara would know how compassionate, how sensitive, how uh, yeah, kind Green Tara is. So it's in that same family. So Amoga City's fearlessness is not, yeah, it's not just this, this bold uh, bravado. Is, uh, is, is, is fearlessness comes from an awareness actually of all dangers. So he's aware of all dangers and that's where the fearlessness comes from. And particularly dangers uh, of his own actions or of our own actions so when we talk about fearlessness it's actually like it's coming from an awareness of all, all the dangers our, uh, our actions can bring about bring about so we could say that Amoga City is uh, is fully convinced and is fully committed to, to the karma and karma vipaka what we call the laws of karma and karma vipaka so that's our laws of action and consequences of actions so is uh, is like there's this there's this awareness that uh, even this trifling small small unskillful actions we 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 sort of commit will have consequences will have consequences, and uh, yeah it's, it could be actions it could be actions of uh, our body it could be actions of speech or actions of the mind so even even actions that uh, other people will never know about any things that just go out in our heads. Is a, there's an awareness of the consequences of that when we when we talk about Amoga City. So that's where the fearlessness, in a way, comes from, because uh, well, Amoga City is taking full responsibility for all actions and is acting purely, uh, yeah, out of skillful skillful intentions. All actions he's coming from is 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 skillful. So in a way, there isn't anything to fear. There isn't anything to fear, and uh, and yeah, it's it's. It's not, it's not quite how I quite often operate. There's a, I quite often catch myself not, not taking full responsibility for my part on things. There could, you know, could be denial, it could be excuse making, rationalizations, or blame and things like that. Whereas uh, when we, well, what Amogo City is representing is this kind of just taking full responsibility for all actions, and especially just before you do it. So it's almost like a stop to any unskillful action so we could stop to any unskillful action and to in terms of that external but internally as well so when when we're in that place where we uh well we might be slightly tempted to do something a bit on the unskillful side just 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 think of that mudra you can even try that mudra in a way like stop this will have consequences this will cause me and others harm and and suffering so in a way that's where the that's why that's kind of that's where the fearlessness of Amoga city comes because his, uh, his actions, he's representing these actions that come from pure, pure, skillful action. So there is nothing to fear. And the more we, the more we act skillfully, the less and less we have to be anxious and fearful about. So, you know, that's what, that's what it's representing. Yeah. And in a way, if we, if we think of it in terms of when we act skillfully, so when we're acting skillfully, we're coming from a place of metta. So we're acting, we're relating to people from a place of metta. And when there is metta, there is no fear. So where there's pure metta, we can't have fear. So when we're acting of pure kindness, pure, pure, pure generosity, and yeah, really keeping people, ourselves and others in mind and acting for the benefit of all, 
while there is no room for, for fear in a way, there's no internal, internal fear. Yeah, so it is essential in terms of if you want to develop more of this fearlessness, to develop more meta. So yeah, we could say Amoga City is the embodiment of total skillful action. Well, uh, I'm certainly not yet uh, embodiment of total skillful action. <laughs> I don't think I'm alone either, but I'll talk for myself and take responsibility for myself, I think. And uh, often, uh, often when I act unskillfully or there's unskillful intentions involved in my actions, it's, it's quite often to do with fear. And maybe always, I mean, I can't tell for sure, but there's definitely a lot of the time there's a, there's a real sense of uh, fear. There's a sense of fear there and that gets in the way. And uh, so, so when I'm when I'm practicing, when I'm trying to grow, there's on this journey towards fearlessness in a way. There's there's well, there's many occasions where we have to work with fear, where we where we come across fear, and we need to we need to work with fear. And then I quite like that phrase when many of us heard, isn't it? Like feel the fear and do it anyway. So many people have probably come across that book and that phrase, feel the fear and do it anyway. But in saying that, it's worth it's worth differentiating. Like there are rational fears, <clears throat> and there are irrational fears, if you want to put it that way. <clears throat> so if you're on the cliff edge, don't just feel the fear and do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a rational fear. That's a good one. And you know, it's, it's, it's listen to that fear. Or oh, if you're driving and stuff, you know, don't just don't, yeah, it's, it's take responsibility and don't just be reckless with it. It's not just causing fear or just facing fear for the sake of it. It's uh, yeah, when we work with fear, it's, it's irrational fears is what, 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 what we really mean and what we're trying to really work with. And, uh, and I like, like, yeah, we can, we can, you know, we can sometimes use uh, positive distraction, what we call positive distraction, if fear gets too much for us. And there is space for that. It's not like uh, we're not, we are, we're not, we're not among the city yet. We can't just face four fears all, 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 all at once in a way. And it's not easy to work with as well. It's not easy thing to work with fear. And, uh, you know, I was preparing this talk today around fearlessness. And then uh, I went downstairs to do some stuff. And I moved a couple of yoga mats to put upstairs. And there was a big spider. <laughs> and I'm not particularly fond of spiders. And, uh, yeah, I, I could have tried to pick it up myself, but I didn't. <laughs> I found someone in the name of Edward. Uh, <laughs> he was happy to pick the spider and release it outside. And he was, you know. Anyway, <laughs> that's all right. But yeah, like you know, we work with fear, but there is a. Yeah, it's almost like a, it goes really well with that thing. This this greenness, this green thing with Amoga City, like that plants. You know, you can see the weakest looking things, little plants, slowly, slowly work their way through toughest obstacles and break through like concrete and roads and all sorts of places. And it's it can be much more of a journey of slowly, slowly developing this ability to work with fear. And uh, well, I could say like, so what kind of fears are we talking about in this, in this sense of fearlessness? And uh, yeah, like something like fear of failure. So that could be quite a big one for people. Uh, for thinking fear of being seen or fear of not being seen. That could be quite a big irrational fear that stops us. Or uh, fear of yeah, standing out in that sense, fear of poverty, fear of rejection. I mean, I've, I've still work with fear of responsibility. I'd rather not have any. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's essential in a way that I work with that. Or fear of disapproval. Uh, and in a way, these are the kind of things that really, really stop us from achieving what we could achieve. So these fears really get in the way. These fears really get in the way of achieving what we can achieve. So it's, just, it's really important that we work with them. Uh, if we want to grow and if we want to benefit people more than we can, we are now. So it's really important. And, uh, and in a way, like, there are many things that are helpful for that. Like, uh, in a way, our sangha or just friendship, good friendship, spiritual friendship, as we call it, is, is, is quite a big help to actually de develop in this uh, ability to develop more fearlessness. And, uh, well, meta and mindfulness meditations is really, really helpful in, in working, working with fear, more and more developing fearlessness. As well as, uh, well, the Dharma itself, the teachings that we get here, or like things like the gap, so we can get in the gap and not act instantly and change and become creative responses. That's really, really helpful. The precepts themselves and uh, can be very helpful in giving us a direction to change towards direction to, to, to transform our energies. 
as well as uh, yeah, just having this bigger goal in life, having 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 the Buddha as an example and something to work towards can be very helpful. And I think I think most of us all, I think we'd all say that we would like to be more fearless. But it's it's just that aspiration to be more fearless so we can grow more and benefit others more. And it's one of the generosities as well, giving fearlessness. It's really, really, really helpful in, 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 in facing and working with fear. So I thought of a, I thought of a few things uh, from my experience of me working and not working very well with fear in a way. And one of the things that that's, I'm realizing lately more and more is that when I was younger, uh, I was quite, I was quite, uh, I could be quite competitive. But if you ask me a few years ago, it says I'm not competitive. And uh, I realized that I was kind of uh, a bit embarrassed, but I was, I, was, I was afraid of my competitive side, basically. Uh, I was afraid of my competitive side. And I was afraid of uh, trying and losing, trying and failing. And in a way, that led me to not put my everything into what I did. So when I used to play basketball, football, and things like that, I never did the best I could. And in a way, that's turned into a habit in some way that I'm still trying to undo. And in a way, I can see, oh, yeah, I didn't know any better. And, and I developed it. Well, I let fear guide me, guide me into becoming a smaller, smaller person. Uh, yeah. And I was thinking the other day, well, it was a few weeks ago, we went, we went to a funeral. And it was, I, I, was, I was stood there. And I don't have many experience of funerals, but I could see the person who'd, who'd lost their loved one. And part of me wanted to move towards them. And part of me is like, don't be the first one to go near I might say something silly. I'll just wait till someone else goes. I'll join behind them. And I was just kind of, I was, I could see this fear of saying, making a fool of myself, saying something silly really stopped me. Uh, and it was, it was almost like a feel I'm over city, or at least it felt like a push from, <laughs> from behind in a way. But it's like, no, I feel my heart wants to go out to this person. So I just got, I just went with that. And this, this, this experience from being like fear getting in the way of, of a connection to just having this really positive, beautiful, uh, Kind of communication with this with this person, and, I, and 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 it meant a lot to them, and it meant a lot to me because yeah, it was, it was it was just beautiful, and it was just great to not let fear get in the way of doing that, get in the way of doing that. Uh, yeah, so I'm looking at time, but yeah, there are many 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 other examples. Of it. I think all of us can relate to working with fear in our lives and, and where, where we, yeah, where we, I suppose, kept limited and in, in small because of fears. So I, could, I think it'd be good if we spend some time in, in the groups where we can talk about, yeah, what, uh, is there any particular fears we'd like to work with that, that we think holds us back? And also what would be helpful for us to work with that? How can we find more support so we can work with those, uh, with those fears so we can grow and we can be more of the, we can achieve more that we want to achieve. We can be more of the person we'd like to be. Yeah. So we can say that Amoga City uh, embodies this as active aspect of enlightenment. So we've, we've heard different aspects of enlightenment from the other Buddhas, the generosity, the, the sort of immovability, the groundedness uh, of Akshobhya, and then the love and compassion of uh, Amitabha. And Amoga City really embodies the active aspect. So it's really, really active, a lot of energy. And then also the fact that like a spiritually developed being would also be very competent and, and successful in, 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 in achieving things, in, in, in making things happen, in growing, in developing and benefiting others. So it would be quite competent and, uh, and successful in that way. And so the more we can leave behind our sort of our self-imposed fears and limitations, the more we can do that, the more we can like, well, liberate these energies that are in us, the energies that go and, and holding us back, holding ourselves limited and small, we can really liberate these energies. And, uh, and, and that's, this, this is gonna obviously lead us to become more unstoppable. It's gonna let us to become more, more accomplished and more unstoppable. If all these energies are on board and actually supporting what we're trying to do rather than, rather than stopping us. And in a way, on that, in that way, well, we become more and more like Amoga City. So more and more uh, fearless in terms of not letting these irrational fears, fears stop us. So yeah, so uh, that's, that's in a way, that's Amoga City, the green, green Buddha of the North. 
holding the double double vajra and with the fear and the fearlessness mudra abaya mudra and drawn around by shang shang birds just 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 smashing their, their, their symbols, making this tremendous noise, tremendous energy and whizzing around the sky and turning envy into the all accomplishing wisdom. Thank you. Thank you. Uh...